a striking sight in central Sarajevo. Wearing their beards and clothes in the manner prescribed by the Prophet, these young Salafists are preaching their vision of Islam based on Sharia law in one of Sarajevo's busiest shopping streets. Even as they quote Facebook, they want to return to the origins of Islam. Their strategy is simple, proffering sweets with one hand, Quranic texts in the other. Come along, help yourselves. That's for the kids. 50 wonderful stories. I'm happy to see that Islam is progressing and spreading. In Bosnia, Islam has coexisted with Christianity for the past six centuries. Bosnian Muslims are largely moderate. Drinking alcohol is common, while veiled women are rare. A year ago, it was that tolerant Islam that Bakir rejected as he chose a more rigorous interpretation of the faith. To find the real Islam, you should stick to the interpretation of the early generations and not of the modern, often polluted interpretations that are influenced by Western philosophy. And Saudi Arabia, they, they retain the, this most pure, pure Islam. Bosnia's Muslims, or Bosniaks, represent 45% of the total population. Until recently, few sported pronounced visible signs of their faith. Now, though, Islam is increasingly assertive. A lot of it in Bosnia is more of a fashion statement, as crazy as that sounds. Because I think a lot of these girls, you know, they put the veil on, but they're very empowered and they are very outspoken and but I also feel that it's a change from what we really are. If it continues like this, it's sure that they'll become even more radicalized. They'll become a bigger community and they will recruit terrorists. That sentiment of rejection means Bosnia's small Salafist community still exists on the margins of society. Azra and Mirsad were both born in Sarajevo and both chose Salafism in the wake of the civil war. They now devote their energies to Islamic-inspired social work and good deeds. Today we're delivering a wheelchair to Sara, a seven-year-old girl. We launched an appeal on the internet because she's affected by a number of serious sicknesses. These pictures will be posted on Azra's Facebook page to help encourage future donations. The wheels just need pumping up. What do you think? Can we come in to see Sara? Azra's full veil used to frighten the young girl. Now she's used to it. In Bosnia, medical treatment is costly and health insurance rare. The aid that Azra provides is seen as a blessing. Believe me, we did everything possible. We never went to anyone to ask for help up until now. The first time I publicly asked for help was when I went to Mrs. Azra. We just kept trying ourselves. One in five Bosnians lives in poverty. Standing in for the state's failures allows Azra to depict Salafism as a pillar of society. But that zealousness is not always welcome. Despite their friends in their own neighborhood, the couple have been attacked, spat on and insulted. That, though, has done little to shake their belief that they're part of an enlightened minority. Everything I do in life, I do according to religious rules. If they say it's reasonable to have four wives and I fulfill all the conditions, well, I can have four. <laughs> Women are by nature jealous, it's natural. And it would be hard for me, but if Allah allows him to have more wives, then I cannot prevent him from doing so. Azra wasn't always so strictly observant and submissive. In her youth, she went to bars and nightclubs, and in the early years of the war, she volunteered for the army to defend Sarajevo. That's me, and that's a brother in arms, Nerman. I hope he's still alive. I haven't seen him in years. This was taken in the Sarajevo tunnel. Azra's war photos show a distant past that reflect her changes. She insists now her face be blurred. The conflict two decades ago inspired Azra's intense faith. 
which was also the moment the Salafist movement arrived in Bosnia. As the war between Orthodox Bosnian Serbs and Muslim Bosniaks intensified, the conflict attracted foreign fighters, Mujahideen, to come and defend their Islamic brethren. They included forces financed by Saudi Arabia, who brought with them their more radical Islam. After the war, Saudi aid organizations stepped in to shore up a state led dry by the conflict. Their cash helping rebuild the country, villages, schools, and above all, mosques. One of those is the King Fahd Mosque in Sarajevo. It's the largest in the Balkans. It's where Bakir often prays. So it's a place where uh, people would come and socialize and if be a productive, um, fertile ground for making business connections, uh, just getting to know all, all of the all the brothers and uh, try, even getting married, you know, extending family ties. Bakir's Quranic teacher also helped him find a job as a real estate agent, working for wealthy clients from the Gulf. In recent years, Bosnia has become a popular destination for wealthy Gulf Arabs, attracted by its lush countryside. The scale of their ambitions is unprecedented in Bosnia. This tourist village is set to cost four and a half billion euros. That's the equivalent of about a third of Bosnia's annual GDP. We have this uh, key uh, connecting factor to religion and religious uh, practice. We're all connected to Islam, therefore I don't really mind that they are buying it. The King Fahd Mosque is a symbol of Saudi Arabia's grip on the Muslim community in Bosnia. Surrounded by apartment buildings still scarred by the siege of Sarajevo, it attracts hundreds of faithful each day. Inside, its facilities go far beyond simple prayer, providing language lessons, a gym and a conference centre. The mosque does not answer to the local authorities. The imam demanded we obtain authorization to film from the Saudi embassy. Fortunately, tonight provides good publicity. Every year, the Saudi kingdom pays for 50 Bosnians to take the pilgrimage to Mecca. The lucky few are the cream of Bosnian society. The selection process is very demanding. We try to choose the elite from public life, from cultural, religious or political spheres. It's a fair and honest process. The Saudi benefactors also provide scholarships to study in the Gulf Kingdom. An opportunity to instill a Saudi version of Islam different to Bosnia's tolerant Muslims amongst the new generation of the country's elite. There are some individuals have been influenced by a certain way, which is very much of, let's say, of the Saudi type. I, I don't deny. They are individuals and cannot form any force. 20 years after a war driven by ethnic hatred, violence and religion remain entwined in the country. Bosnia used to import jihadists, now it exports them. Bosniak fighters are known to fill the ranks of the Islamic State organization. In this radio exchange, recorded in Kobani in northern Syria, the combatants are speaking Bosnian. <laughs> More than 300 Bosnian citizens have taken up arms to fight in Syria. With a population of under 4 million, that's the highest ratio in Europe. They also provide ideal recruitment figures with the Islamist groups' propaganda videos. The threat is taken seriously by the Bosnian authorities. In the past year, Operation Damascus has seen a spate of raids across the country, police seizing weapons and ammunition and arresting 35 radical Islamists accused of financing and inciting jihad. One of those was Bilal Bosnic, the leader of Bosnia's most hardline Salafist group. Bosnic has a long history of preaching radical, uncompromising Islam. In recent years, that's evolved into recruiting jihadists from Europe for the Islamic State organization. The one-time singer, now a passionate proponent of an international caliphate.
Bilal Bosnich was jailed in 2015 for sending dozens of Bosnian Muslims to the Middle East. Many of his disciples will never return. 24-year-old Swad was killed in January fighting for the IS group in Syria. His father blames the man who sent him there. Bilal Bosnich held sway in the far north of the country. This region is predominantly Muslim. Racked by poverty and unemployment, it proved fertile ground for Bosnich's message. As we arrive at the family home of Swad Savic, the young jihadist killed in Syria, the welcome is far from friendly. <laughs> Suad's brother, as he threatens our team, demonstrating the grip exerted by the hardliners. This region is home to 20,000 people, and it's seen 40 young men leave to wage jihad in the Middle East. The isolated area attracts Salafists. They live in closed communities, practicing their strict version of Islam. Bilal Bosnich acquired land nearby for his family and closest disciples. <laughs> Bosnia's intelligence agencies say jihadists trained in this region before leaving for Syria. The struggle between moderates, Salafists and jihadists has marked this local mosque. Its former imam testified against Bilal Bosnich at his trial. Since then, he was beaten up five times and accused of failing in his Islamic duties. He's now left the country. His successor refuses to discuss that subject. He does put the urge to wage jihad in a local context. Alcohol, drugs, fighting abroad and foreign wars. All these problems are equally worrying and need to be addressed. These are sick children, poorly educated. We need to educate them and bring them closer to the mosque. Inside the mosque, moderate Bosnian Muslims mingle with Salafists. But not everyone here is happy with the changes their community is undergoing. There are several branches, Salafist and more moderate. Our old imam practiced moderate, traditional Islam. This new imam is Salafist, I think. He claims to be moderate, because that's what the Islamic community requires. So do you think the Salafists have won here? Something like that, yes. Dissident views are not welcomed by the local Islamic leaders. That tension, reflecting the cost of extremism in the region, a cancer that is eating away at the community. After having met Bilal Bosnich, this woman's son left for Syria. He's been fighting there for the past year. I didn't like to see him go off with them. They left at night to go and pray and read the Quran. I have a Quran here. I can pray when I want here. There's no need to go and pray with those guys with their beards down to the waist. For me, they're not Muslims. They manipulate young people. They send them off God knows where, far from their families. If they're Muslims, Allah only knows better than me. For me, they're not Muslims. She has nothing left of her son. Before he left, he burned all his belongings, clothes and photos. Now she fears he may never return. I'm scared they'll kill him if they find out his mother wants him to come back home. I want to tell him that, but I don't dare. To never see him again would kill me. He's my youngest child. He looks just like me. He's blonde, just like me.
Grief like this mother's will be repeated as long as Bosnia's young men wage jihad in foreign lands. As the Islamic State continues to incite a global conflict, Bosnia is just one of the front lines. A combination of poverty today and the scars of two decades ago, bringing religious warfare to the gates of the European Union.